This is Twit. So, Stacy, uh, you you because you cover this field, you're very well aware of all the risks and hazards. Yet, you have loaded your home with Internet of Things devices. I've thrown caution to the wind. Thrown caution to the wind. What do you do for yourself? What do you tell family and friends about security? Sure. So I always I always change the password on any device that I bring in. Most most of my devices are actually modern enough that they force me to do it. So and that always gives that makes me happy. I don't get irritated when they're like, "Hey, by the way, this is a crappy password. Try again." <laughs> I'm like, "Thank you, okay. nice device." <laughs> like I said, I look for things that are over the air updatable, and I also this is really simple. When I want to buy a device, I Google it first, and I check to see, has it been hacked? And more importantly, how has the company handled it? So have they ignored it? Sometimes if I'm feeling extra fancy, I'll be like, hey, do they have a bug bounty? Do they even have an email people can look at? That, that's hard to do if you buy this stuff on impulse. So you know, maybe don't make your connected devices an impulse buy. And from there, I basically have, I have a password manager. I follow those kind of things, and I know that I could get hacked. Right. So there's like I don't have cameras in my home because that does kind of freak me out a little bit. We didn't talk about uh, credit monitoring, but I'm, I'm, you know, yesterday, Lisa, uh, I pay for a credit monitoring service, which, you know, some people say as dubi as of dubious value. But yesterday, Lisa got a message from them saying, uh, we saw your information on the dark web. And it was associated with Kickstarter because Kickstarter had a breach. And, I, and I, she said, what should I do about this? And that's part of the problem I think a lot of people have. What do I, okay, yeah. what do I do about this? Um, you know, she, I happen to know that Kickstarter had a breach. So I said, well, you might want to change your Kickstarter password. And if you have a credit card associated with them, maybe you want to change that. Those notifications don't give you that kind of information. Um, do, you, do you have a credit monitoring service? Do you? I don't. No, and I think that a lot of people... If they have it, it's because Equifax gave them a free one for a year, right? <laughs> I, I have, there, there are companies that, and again, this is part of being a journalist, and I don't think they serve individuals, but you can, you can ask them to check the dark web or, right. I hate saying the dark web, that feels so, con I mean, it could, be, it could be out in the open, it, who knows? That's a very media <laughs> term, yeah. isn't it? Like where the evil people live. Like my, my airline frequent so. flyer mile thing could have leaked, I don't right. know. And right. so I have them check for my passwords and... A lot of banks will do that too, yeah. and credit cards and so forth. Yeah, but what do you think of credit card monitoring? Do you do that? Do you care? Uh, I I don't do credit card monitoring either. Uh, yeah. But I have with each of the agencies put a uh, freeze on my credit. That seems like a very good yeah. thing to do. And it's uh, it's not free, unfortunately. I think it's it's free in some states. Free. Yeah, it's free in some states. Uh, and I in California, it's thirty bucks, and then to take it off, it's thirty bucks, which is infuriating. Oof. Yes, that is infuriating. Um, maybe a, a tip is if you uh, call them up and report that you think it was your card number, then they have, have to give it to you. They have to, yeah, right. Which is a part of a law in the U.S. Right. Um, so that's a, a simple hack. Um, <laughs> oh, they don't verify it. Uh, well, uh, I think just reporting that <laughs> they sufficient. have to. Then nice. Right? So that may be a way around the yeah. useful hack. Or you could flash your credit card number again on the show. Yeah. <laughs> no, a credit yeah. freeze is actually a, a really good tool. Uh, and and it, it may cost money, it may not, but uh, that's a very good tool. What else do you do? To in addition yourself? to that, um, you know, password managers are great. That's one of the first things I do when somebody asks me is go get a password manager, a good one, um, particularly one where uh, it keeps the information on your own computer, mm -hmm. uh, maybe backs it up to the cloud. But, but encrypted if it does. Encrypted, right? absolutely. Have a strong password for that. And then you don't necessarily even need to change that one very often. And right. it just takes care of the passwords in the back end is one, number one. Number two, update everything. Phones, as soon as there's an update for it, get yeah. the update, laptops, uh, et cetera. Um, I also recommend uh, a service that Troy Hunt has. It's a free service, Have I Been Pwned? And that acts like the dark That's web your dark password. web search right, right there, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, it's free, you just go Give them your email address or contact info, and they'll tell you when. Have I been pwned? dot com. P W N. P W N E D. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, Has a hacker taken over? Have I been pwned? Spelled correctly, because then <laughs> <laughs> that would be Domains pretty one. savvy. Yeah. So just tell me your credit card number, and I'll tell you if I'm you've like, been hacked. Yeah. It's yeah. Brilliant. Hold on. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> take this off the air. And then um, I think one thing uh, that you mentioned, Stacy, is. 
ask questions when you're going to buy things. So ask, you know, is this updatable? Right. What is the security of this? And one of the things that I learned in going through some of the, um, the work that I've done is actually retail outlets are very sensitive to customers asking questions, right? So if you ask security questions, they'll do more training of their staff, they'll look more into the things that they buy like that. and put on the shelves. Um, and uh, even like car manufacturers, right? Or physicians or whatever your point of contact is. What's your security? Device. What's yeah. your security look? What's yeah. security is? I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. We did, we actually bought a car and we did ask like, is this over the air updatable? I bet you're the first person that ever asked that too. Come on, someone else has asked. No, I bet no? you're the only one. Okay. I bet you this, what did the salesperson do? Did he? I don't know. Yeah. He said, well, I'll look into that. Yeah, I'll find out <laughs> for you. Let me ask my manager. <laughs> and then uh, one last thing that Stacy also mentioned um, is uh, impulse buys on connected technology. And there was a, uh, <laughs> so uh, Ian Not that Fair. anyone would ever do that. Ian Fairchild, uh, with the, uh, he was with the Atlantic Council at the time, wrote a um, strategy for DOD IoT security. Uh, and the number one thing that he had in that was uh, the idea of connection by exception. If it doesn't have to be connected, don't. And when it does need to be connected, only for that time window. It may be a bit extreme for a lot of people, but it gets to the idea of impulse buying thing, something that's connected, like an internet connected stove, for instance. Um, you might not need that, right? You do. You really do. No, you do. <laughs> she talked me into an oven that's in her. I have an internet connected oven and I love yeah. that thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, how about you, Wendy? What do you, what do you do? Well, uh, it, 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 to be real honest, I had a friend who worked for a credit monitoring, um, company and he just signed me up for lifetime credit monitoring for free. So. <laughs> Uh, that's that's the your the thing you should do. Make friends with a security person. <laughs> that that's your I best security a plan. Is a very good plan. You yeah, know, uh, and uh, keeping on totally. their good side. Um, and but you know you have to think about how to secure not only the things that you buy but also how to teach your kids about security yes. when they're growing up. How to help your parents as they age. Yes. Um, and, and and negotiate everything in between. So for example, one of my kids when he was like three or four was playing on the computer and we found him in the middle of downloading and installing a browser plugin. Bonzi and he, buddy. And, and he, no, he couldn't even read yet, but the, but he, he wow. They got him young. So, so here's how it happened. He, he, he discovered that, you know, when something pops up a window, there are two choices yes. and usually one of them is outlined, meaning it's the Do default choice. Yeah, yeah. So he discovered that if he clicked on that one, it would make the window go away and he could get oh, back to what he was wow. doing. Smart kid. So he got all the way through downloading and starting to install a plugin until he got to the EULA, the end user license agreement, and there was no highlighted default choice between ex God. agree and disagree. And so he got stuck and didn't know what to do, and that's where we found wow. him. Wow. So the flip Reading side of the that EULA. is my, my daughter, she, when anything pops up on her computer, she comes running down the stairs <laughs> you go, dup, 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 with the laptop. Ma, what do I do? <laughs> good for her. But it that's is, important. It is that. good, but it's also kind of like, there's a lot of pop-ups happening on websites. <laughs>